Hey Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all our Guru Maharajas. Many humble obeisances at your Lotus Feet Maharaj. Maharaj, today we will proceed from Canto 7, chapter number 9, text number 27. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you can take the call over. Hare Krishna. Okay, let's see. Oh, one minute here. Don't don't switch over yet. Oh, let me see here. Okay, don't switch over one one minute here. Uh, <laughs> Lalita, are you there? Lalita Tangi? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanud Pranams. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Glory to Prabhupada. Can you read the verse and and uh, purport today? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Okay. When she brings it up, then you can begin. I'll do the verse. You can you can in translation if you could just do the purport. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. My eyes cannot look at the computer right now. So some assistance. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Na sam parava mataba vatona nushat Yantur yatatma sudaro jagatas tatapi Sam sevaya suratayor Ivate prasadam sevanu rupa udayo na paravaratum Translation Unlike an ordinary living entity, my Lord, you do not discriminate between friends and enemies, the favorable and the unfavorable. Because of you, there is no conception of higher and lower. Nonetheless, you offer your benedictions according to the level of one's service, exactly as a desire tree delivers fruit according to one's desires and makes no distinction between the lower and the higher. Purport uh, by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. In Bhagavad Gita 4.11, the Lord clearly says, E yata maam prapadyante tam stataiva bhajamyaham. As one surrenders to me, I reward him accordingly. As stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jeevera Swarupahoy Krishnera Nitya Das, Every living being is an eternal servant of Krishna. According to the service the living entity renders, he automatically receives benedictions from Krishna, who does not make distinctions, thinking, here is a person in an intimate relationship with me, and here is a person I dislike. Krishna advises everyone to surrender to him. Sarva dharma parityajya ma mekam sharanam braja. One's relationship with the Supreme Lord is in proportion to that surrender and the service one renders unto the, unto the Lord. Thus, throughout the entire world, the higher or lower positions of the living entities are selected by the living entities themselves. If one is inclined to dictate that the Lord grant something, one receives benedictions according to his desires. If one wants to be elevated to the higher planetary systems, the heavenly planets, he can be promoted to the place he desires. And if one wants to remain a hog or a pig on earth, the Lord fulfills that desire also. Therefore, one's position is determined by one's desires. The Lord is not responsible for the higher or lower grade of our existence. This is further explained quite definitely in Bhagavad Gita 9.25 by the Lord Himself. Yanti Deva Vrita Devan Pitran Yanti Pitri Vrataha Bhutani Yanti Bhutejya 
yanti madhya jinopi mam some people want to be promoted to the heavenly planets some want to be promoted to pitruloka and some want to remain on earth but if one is interested in returning home back to godhead he can be promoted there also according to the demands of a particular devotee he receives a result by the grace of the lord the lord does not discriminate thinking here is a person favorable to me and here is a person who is not favorable rather he fulfills the desires of everyone therefore the shastras enjoin akama sarva kamo va moksha kama udhara dihi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param whether one is without desire the condition of the devotees or is desirous of all fruitive results or is after liberation one should with all efforts strive to worship the supreme personality of godhead for complete perfection culminating in krishna consciousness bhagavatam 2.3.10 according to one's position whether as a devotee a karmi or a jnani whatever one wants one can get it one can get if one fully engages in the service of the lord hari krishna Om Gyan Pramodam Dasya Gyana Gyana Samakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasma Isi Guru Vena Maha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padati Kam Panchakalpa Tarubis Chakri Basinda Paeva Chakatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaur, Bhakta Rindam. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hmm. So there's two, the Lord has two principal energies. It's the Antaranga Shakti and the Bahiranga Shakti. The Bahiranga Shakti is the uh, external energy of the Lord. The Antaranga Shakti is the internal energy of the Lord. Or you might say the material world, the material energy and the spiritual energy. So, Krishna works directly through the spiritual energy and sets up the material energy which works according to how he set it up. He doesn't get involved with the activities of the material energy, but he sets up the material energy to work in a certain way, and he has his representatives who are conductors of the material energy, such as Brahma, Shiva, and many, in many times Vishnu also. But the Supreme Lord doesn't touch the material energy, nor does he get involved in material energy. It works automatically. But... Still, the material energy is working according to his desire. And therefore, this verse is one of the very you know, fundamental verses for understanding how things happen. So Krishna is like a mirror uh, in the sense that what you put in front of the mirror is reflected in the mirror. In the same way, as you approach the Lord, you get a concomitant result by the nature of your approach. <laughs> so, Prabhupada, using the example of how if you want a particular situation, then you approach the Lord in that way. When you do it through the material energy, you're doing it by the manipulation of the material energy and also you put in the effects of the three modes of material energy depending on what is the quality of your desire. If you want to go to the heavenly planets, then you somehow cultivate the mode of goodness. If you want to enjoy material happiness here through various kinds of material gain, you cultivate the mode of passion. And if you want to become uh, somewhat destructive in your activities, and at the same time, or take take part in sinful activities, vikarma, 
then you can contact with the mode of ignorance. All of these modes are working under the Lord's direction, but he is not directly involved in this. It's just like a, a watchmaker makes a watch and he puts all of the ingredients together. The watch works in a certain way. It may have different features in the watch, but they're all working according to how the watchmaker designed it. So Krishna designed the material world through his different energies, and these energies carry out the functions of the material world. He's not the, directly involved with that. He doesn't touch that. But for the devotees, the spiritual world, then he is, that same principle also applies, yeyatam mam prapadyante. But devotees, our desires are spiritual. So if they want to go back home, back to Godhead, then there's a process for them to achieve that. If they want the association of the Lord on some planet in the material world, that is also there. Uh, if they want to become involved with some kind of spiritual activity in a particular position, they may also petition the Lord for that also. In other words, there's ways by which one can gain their uh, desired result through the process of bhakti. But the box, process of bhakti has to be there. Otherwise, there is no connection with the Lord on the spiritual platform. That one is automatically connected with the Lord in an indirect way through the material energy, which is many times pleasant, and I mean more, many times unpleasant, and a, and a few times pleasant. <laughs> So, yeah, and the Lord is, uh, he's neutral. Uh, he says in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Samoham Sambhabhuteshu Name Dweshu Sthina Priya. I envy no one. I'm not partial to anyone. Nor do, do I, uh, I'm equal to all, he says. <laughs> but one who renders devotional service is a friend, and I am a friend in him. So uh, if one wants to receive the mercy of the Lord and, and the ultimate benedictions, then one should engage in devotional service. But in any situation here, the Lord is not partial. He doesn't dislike the demons either, even because they're demons. Because all living beings are his children. So how can a father dislike even the bad children in this in the family. The father may have to punish the bad children, but still his love is there for the bad children in the form of correction or punishment. So, but the same way the Lord is not partial to anyone. And people in this material world cannot understand that. Why is someone getting this and someone else is getting that? Why has this person got so much good good things happen to him and this person, even though they're a good person, still bad things are happening. And people criticize or they can't really understand how the Lord works. And there's a, they're expecting that everyone should get, um, you know, the, what we say, a certain result from their activity. And when it doesn't happen, they get confused or they blame the Lord for being partial, which he's not. <laughs> he says that through. So, but the point is, as you approach, he rewards accordingly. So those who want Krishna, they have to approach Krishna in a devotional way. Those who want something from Krishna in the, in the, in a, material sense, in other words, they want some material benefit and they worship the Lord for that. They may also get that, but they don't get Krishna. So everyone is worshiping or expressing what they want according to their desire and activity. So therefore Krishna is never to be the, to blame for anyone's happiness or distress. But there's this verse in the Kama Sarva Kama Vav Moksha Kama Dharadi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusham Puram. 
This verse is very fundamental to understanding the equality of the Lord. Whether one wants material desires or whether one wants to be situated free from uh, the activities of, in other words, the jnanis, the karmis, and ultimately the bhaktas, if they want Krishna, all of them can get Krishna or according to their particular desire uh, by following a certain process like that. So uh, the Lord is equal to everyone. He's not partial. And he gives benedictions according to how we approach. That's all. Just like it's a very simple example. You see it in the family. You have children in the family and some of the children obey the father and others don't. The ones who obey get many of the benefits that the father can offer. And those who disobey, they lose out on those benefits. And at the same time, they may also get punished. But still, because they're all children, they're all being treated equally according to how they desire and how they behave. Desire is the, fin the principle, and behavior is an extension of that desire accordingly. <laughs> so this is a very important uh, sit, uh, verse because uh, it came, comes up again in the sixth, it came up again in the sixth canto in the story of um, Ajamil, or even before then, it's called Prischitya. When people commit some kind of sinful activity and they want to, uh, they're, they're due to some kind of punishment based on the, the sinful activities, how can they free themselves from the reactions of their sinful activities? And they can't do simply do some kind of good work because good work doesn't mutually annihilate or eliminate the reactions of bad work. They're exclusive. We have the example of King Nirga, who was a pious king. He would give in charity quite profusely. He was famous for giving in charity. And one time, two Brahmins came to him for charity. And uh, he gave one Brahmin a large number of cows. And then he gave the second Brahmin an equal number of cows. But one of the cows from the first Brahmin came into the herd of the second Brahmin. And then the Brahmins were discussing who, whose cow was was. King Nirga gave it to me. No, King Nirga gave it to me. And because they couldn't get, they became angry and they left. And, and King Nirga tried to ameliorate the situation by offering more cows to the first Brahmin, but he, did, he didn't want them. He said, the, the Brahmin's property is considered to be sacred, therefore you gave this cow to me. And the other one said, no, you gave it to me. So they couldn't work it out. So he was due to get pious benefits from his pious activities. And he was also, because he had somehow or other committed an offense in the process of um, offering charity, he was due to get a reaction for that. And so he, when he came before Yamaraj at the time of death, Yamaraj asked him, well, you have many pious activities and you also have one, one major sinful activity. What do you want first? So here's an example of how things are not mutually, uh, uh, let's say, what's the word? Uh, they're not, uh, you can't uh, overshadow pious, uh, pious activities by, or impious activities by pious activities. Both have to get the reactions accordingly. And so he was forced to take birth as a lizard. Of course, later on, he was saved by Lord Krishna. But the point is that these things are not mutually uh, what we say, nullifiable. That's the word. I do something bad. If I do something good, that nullifies something bad. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You have to, we have to get the results of both. 
course, if you continue to do something good and avoid something bad, then, you know, you still have to get the reactions for that bad thing. But because you have so much good karma coming, it, it overshadows the effects of the not negative in the sense that still you get the reaction. But because you have so much good karma, then that becomes prominent. So the, the whole law of karma, reaction, action and reaction, and how the Lord reciprocates with his devotees and with people in general is nicely explained in this verse. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Yeah, Hare Krishna. Sure. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for your wonderful class and wonderful lesson. So I'm slightly confused here. Uh, you beautifully uh, explained that it doesn't get nullified. The pious activities doesn't cross out the uh, the impious activities. But when we chant the Maha Mantra, uh, doesn't really it nullifies our our like some of our karmas, especially the impious yeah, one. You can nullify all of it. Yes. But that's bhakti, that's not pious or impious. That's akarma, yeah. Yeah. Bhakti bhakti can it will destroy the reactions of both good and bad karma. Good karma too. So the the um uh, the Mahar the you know the king's example that you were quoting Maharaj he was not doing bhakti no he was just a, a pious king mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. thank you so much thank you so much Maharaj for the wonderful class and always your association we are so fortunate to always have you in bhakti sangha regularly devotees please feel free to unmute yourself Maharaj is right here go ahead and don't shy away from asking any questions that you might have. Hare Krishna, we have uh, Param Pabini Mataji. Yes, Mataji, if you could go ahead and ask your question, please. Hi, Krishna Mataji. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. So nice and beautiful, inspiring class. Maharaj, uh, one uh, question that I ha uh, have that... Um, the king was, as you mentioned, the king, the how actually moved from one heart to another, moved one heart to another heart. And the king was trying to pacify and ameliorate the situation. But why still uh, he need to, he, he, it was uh, accounted as a bad karma. Like he he tried his best and it was like unknowingly happened. Yeah. So you get you get reactions for knowing unknowingly making uh, impious activities also. Both Brahmins were offended. And they went they went away angry at the king. So that was so because of that, he had to, he had to suffer for that. That's if you want to if you want to know the whole pastime, you can read it. It's in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the tenth canto, the story of King Nirga, N R G A, King Nirga. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances to your lotus feet, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Jai. Bye. We, we have our beloved Sham Guri Mataji with a question. Mataji, if you'd like to go ahead, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All good to Shira Prabhupada. All good to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, Maharaj, uh, my question is like, uh, what makes uh, King Riga to see the Lord face to face like when he was lizard and he got the mercy of the Lord directly? So what was his karma? Like his pious? He was very pious, but is that the result of pious karma or it means what he did? Well, it explains that he was a lizard staying in a well and mm -hmm. one of Krishna's sons, he was a young boy and he was playing with his friends. 
and they were playing ball and the ball fell into the well and they couldn't get it out. So they Krishna came along and they said, you know, how, can you get the ball out? And Krishna reached down and he picked up the lizard. And then when he did, he changed back into his form as King Nirga. Yeah. So it looks like situation of circumstance. Yeah, yes, Maharaj. Yeah, but he was still, you know, fortunate to have darshan of the Lord and mercy of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah, also, Maharaj, Karna was also the famous for giving donations, like uh, giving things. And there are so many stories about that. And cool. sometimes people compare Yudhishthir Maharaj to Karna, like some somebody asked some donation to Yudhishthir Maharaj and he did not give and Karna gave. Like that day, make, make, I don't know, they are made up stories or something, but I heard from right from childhood the stories of uh, Karna donating so many things. So, but still he was not the devotee of Krishna. Yeah, he uh, committed a lot of offenses. Yeah. Yeah, he was involved with uh, insulting Draupadi. Yes. And because of that, when he was fighting with Arjun, Arjun knocked his chariot. And then the fighting is supposed to stop until the opponent gets back up on the chariot. And so he was fixing his chariot and Krishna said, this is your only chance, kill him. Yeah. So Krishna broke the law of uh, what we say, fighting, which is against the principles of Kshatriya to uh, kill an un unarmed, not fighting opponent. But Krishna said, you know, Krishna did it for two reasons. One, he knew that Arjuna couldn't kill him anyway because Karna was a superior fighter. And the second reason was, was that because he had offended Draupadi, which was the real reason. Yes. She was a chaste lady. She was offended. Thank you, Maharaj. Offending a chaste lady is a very severe offense. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shama Gauri. It must be really hot where you are. <laughs> Yeah. We have Radha Jyoti Mataji. If you would like to ask your question, Mata. Yes, yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna and Danvit Pranam to you. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Danvit Pranam uh, is holiness. Uh, thank you so much for the class. Uh, and my my question is a little different. Uh, uh, Maharaji, when, when we chant, uh, there is a need of... Uh, that is understanding that okay the the holy name is lord himself and then we think sometimes we feel because it's long way to go so what is the dynamics of that feelings uh how does it purify or when when that feeling will come oh lord is with me while chanting or uh, what exactly we should do to that feelings because for the thoughts we can understand it will be purified by shastras and the willingness will will come with the association or when we look up to others as an inspiration but i'm not able to understand how that feelings works so could you please teach on this hari krishna how you supposed to feel when you start to tasting the happiness of chanting is that the question yeah i wanted to know what is that feeling how to define it basically because when we define, we understand, okay, this is how it will work, but I'm not able to understand how does it goes. 
uh, I was confused yesterday. I was thinking, uh, what what is about that intention? In, is the intention of feeling? Well, but yeah. then, yeah, the thing is, uh, when you come in contact with the holy name, you come in contact with Krishna in the form of the holy name, which is non different than Krishna. So some people cry. Some people dance around the room. <laughs> Some people just uh, roll on the ground. Others become stunned. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's different reactions. There's different possible reactions. But the one, one of the things you can be is grateful for the mercy. <laughs> Very nice. Excuse me, people. Maharaji, could you please explain more? Yeah, yeah. You, it's an experience. How can you explain an experience? It's not possible to explain an experience. So we cannot define even the mood also, isn't it? Don't worry about that. Krishna, let Krishna do all that. All you do is chant. Why, why are you trying to figure out how Krishna works? <laughs> because one day it's very nice chanting and one day I'm like, oh my God, now it's not completing. I'm not at, after 15, after 14, 15, it's like one more round is so heavy for me. I, I, it's it's my attitude. I don't know what. What I should do after 12th round, I feel it's very heavy. Some days are very tough for me. So I was asking all these questions. What are we supposed to say? Some days it's like that. Some days it's not. <laughs> How can, you can't program, you know, your response. It's whatever happens is happening. <laughs> Just assimilate it. Consider whatever happens is mercy. If you can't, if you're finding difficulty when in your chanting, then you should pray more. <laughs> Call out with feeling. Ayi nanda tanuja kinkaram patitam bam vishyame bhavam buddha kripaya tavapara pankaja stita duli sadrisham vichintaya Oh, son of Maharaj Nanda, Krishna, I am your eternal servant. Here I am in this material world, and I'm suffering without you. Please pick me up, place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet, and engage me in your loving service. I will do that, Maharajji. I'll definitely do that. I'm so grateful to you. And always you inspire me. Thank you so much for your class and for teachings. All You always give the answers which are very practical. And it's it's easy for me to apply. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for the great question. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful answer. I had seen Lalitangi Mataji raise her hand. Mataji, are you still here with your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for your wonderful class and instructions. So this question is about uh, attachment to devotees. Uh, there are some devotees uh, who have very good qualities and uh, we want to associate with them uh, serve along but uh, where does it stand uh, in bhakti or how to analyze our attachment to devotees whether it is material or spiritual how to what was that last line I, I got confused when you said the last line um, how to analyze our attachment to devotees uh, to make sure that that's uh, that's helping our bhakti and spiritual and uh, not becoming mundane. Well, 
if everything centers around devotional activities, it's not mundane. If it doesn't, then it's mundane. It's that clear. You're associating with and performing spiritual activities, then that act, that association is desirable. You're serving the devotees. You're you're feeling happy happy in the association of devotees. You're getting knowledge in the association of devotees. That's all spiritual. But if you come in the association of devotees, and you want to get some mundane benefit from that, and you want to become popular by being in the association of devotees, you want to be worshipped by the other devotees, you want to be seen as important, <laughs> then these are mundane things. These are a few examples. There's more. You want to show off your new sari in the association of devotees? <laughs> <laughs> you want to become an association of devotees and think now the association is getting better because I'm here <laughs> <laughs> well these are mundane things <laughs> Yeah, these are all so subtle. Yeah, or you might think, you know, we have to cook for the devotees and because they asked me to cook, now the devotees are going to really get the best. <laughs> I'm the best cook. Oh. They also told me that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, look for something mundane. You can think about it in so many different ways. But if you're coming to serve, if you're coming to learn, if you're coming to take part in the spiritual activities, that's spiritual. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, You've been very patient with us for very long and I hope we'll become devotees um, to please you, Maharaj. Take a shot. Yeah, Sharda's got a lot, a lot of good, a lot of wonderful devotees there. They're all wonderful. We want to remain wonderful crossing the tests of Maya and Reaching it, reaching back to home. Yeah, do things together. Don't wait to um, a, a preacher comes through before you organize together. Do it all the time when you're when you're there. Have programs every night. One time your house, one time Bravity's house, one time Shamagori's house. You just keep having programs different places. The more you get together, the more it becomes a spiritual family. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. We have a question at the chat box by Venkatesh Prabhu. It's written, Hare Krishna Maharaj, a question about Rajavasis in the Krishna book. I was reading that sometimes they discuss Krishna is someone special. Once Nanda Maharaj says that Krishna is Lord Vishnu as told by Gargamuni. So they do know if Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, or or do they just treat him as a lovable child, or both, or something else? Can a sadhaka think of Krishna in many relationships, like master and friend? 
there's two moods, the mood of Aishwarya and the mood of Madhurya. The Madhurya mood is the Vrindavan mood. The Aishwarya mood is the Vaikuntha mood. Krishna is worshipped as the Supreme Lord. But in the Madhurya mood, he's worshipped as the beautiful boy of Vrindavan who is someone's, someone's son, everybody's friend, the lover of the gopis, the... Uh, the sinister of the, of the cows. So in Vrindavan, he's not seen. Sometimes there is like, you have the, the story of Varuna, when Varuna's agents captured Nanda Maharaj for bathing too early at an inauspicious time. They brought him to the abode of Varuna. And then Krishna found out, so he came personally to free his father from that. And when he came, Varuna worshipped Krishna. And Nanda Maharaj saw that. And then he could understand that Krishna, he started to see Krishna as, you know, the Supreme Lord. But then that didn't last long. So in Vrindavan, Krishna is worshipped as the beautiful boy of Vrindavan. The sinister of everyone's love, everyone's uh, service. Who asked that question? That was a Prabhu. His name was Venkatesh. Prabhuji, are you there? If you would like to unmute yourself. There is one more question from Radha Jyoti Mataji. She's asking you, Maharaj, is how to develop good qualities for devotion, how to get rid of bad qualities, what should we do every day? Learn the good qualities and work on them. Learn the bad qualities and avoid them. <laughs> Wonderful. And associate with people who have good qualities and avoid association with people who don't. <laughs> These are the two, pro two programs that work together to become one program. <laughs> yeah. Whatever you emphasize, just like it says here in this verse, whatever you want, if you if you act in that way, then Krishna will. If you want good qualities, then you cultivate them, and by Krishna's mercy, they develop. Mm -hmm. If you want to be humble, practice being humble. If you want to be tolerant, practice being tolerant. If you want to be good at things just practice huh? somebody's coming to the door honey ball thank you maharaj there's there was a quick question from scarlet mataji scarlet bloom she's asking may i humbly ask what it mean when it says execute one's prescribed occupational duty. That's that's Svanarsham. You if you're Brahmins, execute the activities of a Brahmin. If you're Kshatriya, do that. If you're Vaishya, do that. If you're not any of the three, then uh, perform activities in association with the others by doing menial services. Occupational duty means vanashram, vanashram acharya, purusham param, Vishnu vararthate panta, nanu sultan vi panditaha. That's that's vanashram. That's material. 
your duties as a devotee is whatever services spiritual master gives you. Mm -hmm. That's spiritual. That's not occupational. Is that clear? Yes, Alex, thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got. Let me see what you're up here. How about let me see? Can you see if you can do it? So this, this is both of them, but I, this is just nice. That's not something that you know, can't do that. Oh, Pogue is also, and then Prashad is also. This is also Prashad. So separate the Boga from the Prashad. Otherwise, it is an offense. A big offense. You can't mix, you can't give Krishna. You can't give them both at the same you know, time. First, you do it, make the offering with boga. When that's done, then you put on the prashada. You only do that with with the with, uh, uh, Jiva Shakti, not Vishnu Shakti. So, this is boga, this is boga, this is boga, that's prashada, that's prashada. So, separate and do the offering with the boga first, like you do in the morning. Mm -hmm. Same procedure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do that again. Don't bring it back in the kitchen and arrange it properly. Change the water too. We have one more question from Venkatesh Prabhupada. He's asking, why do I feel insecure or feel envious when other devotees are doing better services? How to overcome that? Feel happy about them. <laughs> We're on the same team. Mm. If, the short, if you're playing, for those of you who play baseball, I'm those of you who play cricket, you know you have a number of team team players on each team. So if the other one of your fellow team players is doing some nice play, you benefit too because you're on the same two team. So we're on the same team. <laughs> we're all trying to become God conscious. Every everyone's success is your success also. Why should you why should you feel bad about someone's that other's success? You should think, oh, they they serve Krishna so nicely. Let me try to serve Krishna so nicely also. She cooked really nice uh things. And now I want to cook even better than she did. So Krishna, and who wins? Krishna. If you compete in Krishna consciousness for doing better and better and better, Krishna is the one that's benefiting. But if you, if she cooks real nice and then you, next time she cooks, you steal her boga so she can't cook. <laughs> then Sri Devi's laughing, but I've seen that done before, you know. <laughs> it's not like that. I'm just making it up. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I've seen that done before. <laughs> Where's my boga? I can't find it. <laughs> you think, how could devotees do that? But they do. <laughs> Oh my gosh. That's envy. That's all it is. Baba said envy has to go. Just feel, you know, we should. Baba says a devotee feels happy when another devotee is also doing good, and they feel unhappy when another devotee is not doing good. 
they share their happiness, they share their their uh, unhappiness also. That's a devotee. The competition is who who can serve Krishna the best, and and it's not a mean spirited thing. Whoever does the best. Everyone says, wow, you did the best, you're the best, wow. Yeah. Like that, they, then they give them a garland and all kinds of nice words. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Scarlett Mataji, you have another question? Yes, please. This is a, a somewhat, somewhat complicated, so that's why I didn't write it. Uh, thank you very much for today's class. Uh, I don't say that this is, has happened or it's hap where it's happening. I'm I'm just taking this example to understand if it's okay, if it's allowed. For instance, in the school, there are some children get favoritism from the teacher. The teacher who's giving, uh, helping and so on. They are more helpful, more uh, for some children but not for other and that makes the children to feel somewhat uh, insecure and feel bad and so on and so on uh, that's that's that can build uh, envious or, or 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 jealousy and so on is it or is it okay if it's happened within a temple uh, activity thank you well, sometimes we see a devotee has done something outstanding, so they get some some glorification for that or some, some appreciation. Sometimes, just like when we have book distribution, uh, we reward the devotee who does the best. But that doesn't mean you neglect the other devotees. It's not a matter of it's not a matter of neglecting or pushing down someone who's not like that. You may also show some favoritism or some, uh, what we say, glor special glorification, give them special attention. Like, you know, we, we do a big, big program. And so those devotees will stay in the kitchen the whole time working on cooking for everyone. So at the end, the organizers start glorifying the cooks, saying, you know, these cooks, they cooked the whole time. They never came to the programs. They were serving the devotees so nicely. So, yeah, they deserve that. And everyone, said, everyone feels good about that. Negativity comes when we're when there's some some attempt for some material benefit. Thank you, Maharaj. We have Nikita Mataji. Would you like to go ahead and ask your question, please? Yeah, I'm, I'm running out of time, so maybe this is the last one. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaji. Thank you so much for your divine association, Maharaji. <clears throat> um, can I have some permission to say about the animosity thing that you were talking about uh, a minute ago? Yeah. So, uh, Maharaj, yeah, <clears throat> I would like to add uh, for you know devotees uh, who feel envious in that manner. Like you know, if we consider Krishna as our own father, as our very own, like so, why if somebody else is doing something good for our own father, how could we feel envious? In fact, we should be thankful to that devotee. Like, you know, he's doing something for our own Krishna. Right, Maharaj? You got it right. You're a devotee. <laughs> devotee thank you. Like, yeah, you're a devotee. Thank you, Maharaj. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. That, that's, that's, that's what a real devotee thinks like that. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your kind association, Maharaj. Devotees, I believe Maharaj has to go. You, you were saying, Maharaj, we will go ahead and offer our humble obeisances at his lotus feet. One chakalpatarubhya shakalpatarubhya 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 shakalpatarubhya